I think ending relationships, outgrowing relationships is the hardest part of a gap season. And I think it shows me my strength. My strength actually is connecting with people and building relationships, but it also makes that kind of like my Achilles heel where most of my lessons are. Okay, we're back answering your questions about the gap, AKA that season, kind of in the in-between when you've left your previous identity, you're on a personal growth journey and you haven't fully embodied everything that is your new up-leveled identity. And it's this in-between season that is actually where all the magic happens, but it is also, I think, where a lot of the self-doubt, the fear, the, oh shit, did I make the wrong choice? Am I going in the right direction? A lot of questioning happens. And because it's a season that is preparing you for what's next, it is a sign that you are meant for more. It's a transformative season. It also means that in order to step into the new you, there's going to be parts of you that can't come along with. You can't continue to show up as the exact same person and expect to get new results. And one of the biggest questions that came from our community when I posed this to our text community was about outgrowing relationships. Because a lot of times what we're shedding and what we're leaving behind, what we actually have to leave behind in order to move forward might be a connection with someone who's been a big part of your journey, a connection to someone who's meant a lot to you, but your growth is not on the same trajectory and trying to hold on to that relationship in its current form doesn't mean every relationship isn't able to grow and evolve with you, but you're not able to continue the relationship in its current form and also honor the growth journey that you're on and honor the next step you're supposed to take. And for me, this has by far been the hardest, the most painful part. It's probably the part that I resist the most and therefore I delay my own growth because I don't want this to be a part of it. I'll just be honest. I don't want to have to outgrow people. I don't want to have to have relationships evolve and change. But the, the opposite, if, if I think about, well, what would my life look like if I didn't allow this process to happen, allow this evolution to unfold, is I would be stunting my own growth and also theirs. So we're going to dig into this. We're going to talk some tangible tips for how to navigate these relationship transitions. And I'm, I'm not an expert in this. I'm just someone who's very much going through it with you. I'm going through the death of my own self, my relationship with me as I step into the new version of me, the rebirth. But along with that is the realization that there are some relationships that were probably a really big part of a previous season that aren't supposed to be at least play the same role in this next season. So if you're finding yourself in, in this place where everything in you wants to move forward, but you realize what you're holding onto, what's like that last little hook where your old self has its hook in you and isn't allowing you to move forward is just this fear of what does that mean about me as a person? Does it make me a bad person if I'm outgrowing or does it make me greedy or selfish or insert the word that shows up for you? to realize that this is a very normal and necessary part of a growth journey. And I've yet to go through a big transformation, one that has very exciting results waiting for me on the other side, without having some relationships evolve and fall away. At least that's been my experience. Not every relationship is gonna grow at the same rate, at the same speed that you're growing, and it doesn't mean that we have to end every relationship. Sometimes there's space for relationships to grow at their own pace, but it still makes sense for that person to play a role in your life and sometimes not. So I'm going to answer some questions that came from our community and really just share from my heart how this has played a role in different growth and gap seasons that I've had and just some very real feelings that are showing up for me in this current gap season. Because as we talk about this, just this growth journey, 
I think it's to realize that if you're feeling like you're in the gap, if you're feeling that call to grow and evolve, there's something within your soul that your soul wants to experience. It wants to experience a new level of growth. And if we look around and the reflection of our outer lives stays the same, it just means that we're likely to experience more of the same. We're not going to experience growth. And so when I think about how outgrowing relationships has been a part of my growth journey, I can see evidence of where I didn't handle it very well because I was so deeply afraid of disappointing people. And then evidence of where I've learned better tools to communicate and allow relationships to evolve in a loving way that actually leaves us both more empowered. It leaves us both in a better place than we found each other. And I remember going through a particularly challenging growth season around the time that I was writing my first book and my friend's book, Lori Harder. I guess this must have been after my book came out because my book was published just a little bit before her book, A Tribe Called Bliss, came out. And I was reading her book, like this advanced copy of her book. And it was kind of the first time that I heard someone talk about how certain people come into our lives and they're just meant to be there for a specific purpose or a specific season. They're actually not supposed to be a part of your life in the same way for the entirety of your life. And I think especially growing up in the Midwest and very culturally, there's not a lot of talk about growth, especially not a lot of talk about outgrowing relationships or relationships shifting. I, I realized I was carrying a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of feelings of just that there was something wrong with me because I noticed that there were certain relationships that were shifting, especially as I transitioned from one business to another or as I transitioned from one phase of growth to another. And I think I wish I would have heard more people. It wasn't until I read Lori's book that I heard people talking about the necessary shedding that happens, the necessary evolution that happens in relationships as you're on a growth journey. So I'm going to dive into these questions. And if you're finding yourself here right now, I just really want you to know how normal it is and that you're not alone and you are not a bad person. Okay, You get to decide how you handle this evolution season and how you handle the evolution of these relationships and you can do it with the utmost grace and love and compassion and still honor the journey that you're on that might be taking you in a different direction. So the first question is from Julie, Julie Zaruba Fountain. If I am pronouncing anyone's name incorrectly, that's just like an apology in, in advance. But Julie asked, how do you handle relationships that expect you to be your old self? So you've outgrown parts of yourself, but other people around you aren't accepting this change. And I feel like this is really the heart of it, isn't it? The relationships that give us plenty of room to evolve and still want to love the new version of us are usually the relationships that make it through a gap season. So even if the relationship might evolve and someone who is a really big part of your day-to-day -day life now is, is playing a different role. I notice that the relationships where I feel like I have freedom and their support to go through this evolution and they're gonna love me as the next version of myself too, just as much as they love the previous one, those are the relationships that tend to last and stand the test of time. But if you're noticing that your evolution is starting to trigger other people, whether it's triggering fear in them or sometimes like outright anger or they just don't understand. I wanna take us back to some of the conversations we've been having about how, what's actually happening within our physiology and our nervous system when we're on a growth journey because the same way that I was talking about how as you're growing and changing, it starts to trigger a very real fear that's tied to survival within us. And I think this is actually why changing relationships and having relationships evolve and shift in our life feels sometimes like such a, such a death, an internal death, because so much of our safety is rooted in our connections, in our community, in our ability to have people around us who support us. And when we notice that a relationship is shifting out, it can start to make us, it, it triggers a very real survival fear that almost if you think back to to like ancient times like we're being kicked out of a tribe and on the reverse i think it's important to realize the same way that we feel that very real fear 
show up, when we notice a relationship evolving, other people feel that too. And they may not have the same tools that you have. They may not listen to this podcast or they might not be doing the personal work to understand what's actually happening. So for me, I think I always try to come from a place of understanding and grace and compassion that it's very normal for a change in any dynamic, especially if I'm the one changing and evolving and I'm excited about this new direction I'm going and another person isn't on the same growth journey and they they don't understand why they feel the energy shifting between us, it can start to trigger very real fear. So especially if someone is coming to you and there's like a sense of animosity about your growth or this undertone of resentment, for me, it helps to bring compassion to it. I'm not always perfect at this, okay? First, sometimes I get sad or I, I get triggered or I get mad because they're triggered and they're mad. But if I can find myself back in a place of understanding, compassion, grace for what's happening within their mind, within their nervous system right now, that especially if there's an attachment between us, it's someone who relied on me to show up a certain way. Or, you know, if we even think about like the roots of unhealthy patterns, let's say you have an unhealthy pattern that you want to, you want to change. And that unhealthy pattern was a big reason why you connected with this person in the first place. Now, all of a sudden you're saying, hey, I want to change this pattern that was literally the root of our connection. And especially if it's kind of one that's unhealthy, it starts to trigger in the other person an awareness that they're not changing. And I think I always want to come back to checking myself because sometimes I can get into this mindset that almost like I'm better because I'm changing a pattern or I am evolving. I think with personal development, sometimes if we're really, really honest, there can be kind of like this air of superiority that we're in a season where we're growing and someone else may not be. And so number one thing I look out for is that because that energy is not going to be productive at all. It's a very human emotion. It's, it's again, my survival instincts are kicking in and that's why maybe I'm coming from that place. But when I bring it back to, you know, look, they're on their journey, the journey that is perfect for them in the perfect timing for them. I'm also on my journey and I'm following what my soul is calling me to do and evolve and change. And there may come a point where, I mean, the values that this relationship was based around don't align anymore. And it would be almost abusive to ourselves, it's kind of like an intense way to say it, to stay in a dynamic because we're afraid of changing it when our soul is calling us to evolve in another direction. So realizing, number one, what's happening with the other person, that however they're acting is probably coming from a response that's being triggered, that they're their defense mechanisms and self-protection mechanisms are being triggered because they can sense a change. The more I can bring compassion to it, the more graceful any conversations around that usually end up being. And I think I also want to speak to the fact that it's in these moments that it can start to feel kind of lonely. And we talked about this in the initial gap series where we talked about the challenges of the gap and it's this interesting thing where I actually believe that the loneliness, the periods of loneliness within the gap are actually necessary. At least for me, I'm sharing this from the perspective that in this most recent gap, one of the things that I'm sitting with is the realization of certain relationships in my life where I had a lot of, or actually all of my safety and security really grounded in whether or not that person chose me whether or not that person showed up in a certain way. And the moment that shifted, just realizing for myself what fear and self-protection mechanisms got triggered. And what it had me look at was my relationship to aloneness. That when I'm alone, and especially if I was in a season where I wasn't prioritizing my own needs, it didn't feel very safe for my nervous system when I was alone. I couldn't count on myself to meet my own needs. So feelings of loneliness could actually be pointing us to some of the deeper inner work that's available. I just think the gap is such a beautiful time because it has us in these more raw emotions and it's just triggering more. It's bringing more up 
I feel like I just am like triggered on an hourly basis now and just noticing so much that is available for me to shift if I choose to step into it. And loneliness has been one of them, like really looking at my relationship with being alone and the fears that I had around it have been completely transformative. So it's this balance between, I think, listening to that intuition when certain relationships are supposed to evolve, noticing what triggers come up, because even in, you know, it's gonna trigger them, it probably is gonna trigger you in different ways. Being responsible fully for your own triggers, not theirs, that's their work, but bringing compassion and grace to the fact that if they are triggered, it's just the same thing that's happening within you is happening within them in their own in their own way through their own lens and we all have different wounds that end up being triggered whenever dynamics change in relationships. So for me it's it's really grounding into the lessons that are available to me even in the loneliness and in this particular gap season those have actually been some of the most powerful. But for everyone else it's bringing love and compassion to their own process and realizing that I'm actually not doing anyone any favors if I continue to prop up a connection that I have outgrown at least the current version of it. And for me to pretend that I'm still okay with going forward with certain dynamics in a relationship that I'm, I'm not okay with, it's just inauthentic. I'm not actually giving that person all of me. I'm not giving them my full presence because I'm giving them an inauthentic version of my presence. And I think when I ground back into that, it gives me a lot of compassion for myself, compassion for everyone else involved, that this is a natural part of growth. And your growth might be the thing that inspires them to finally make a change for themselves, but we're not holding on to any attachment for that outcome. All we can focus on, the only person we can change is us. So when people expect you to be your old self, it's because your new self holds a giant mirror up to things that they may not be ready to change yet. And that's not actually about you. You can't help that mirror. It's just the natural thing that happens when someone decides, I no longer want to keep going in the direction I'm going. That mirror is inevitable. It's either going to come from you or someone else. And I think those of us that are triggered by being a trigger, if you know what I mean, like it's really uncomfortable for you to be that mirror for someone else. It's to realize that we don't get to be the hero in everyone's story. Sometimes our role is more of a villain or it's more of that person who's meant to hold the mirror up, whether we're trying to or not, but that that actually might be the biggest contribution. Like if truly what we want is the best for that person, our growth might trigger the exact thing that they need for them to decide to make a change for themselves. And that is hard. It's not easy. I still really wish I could be the, the hero in people's story and only get to be the person who makes the positive change. But the more I held on to my attachment to being that, which is com coming from my ego, the less I was being authentic about the places where I just knew it was time to make a change and I was delaying it because I didn't want to disappoint people. So anyone who's dealing with the grief, it's like real grief that can come along with that. I really see you and I feel you. And I think looking at those triggers, looking at your relationship with loneliness, but then on the flip side, really being intentional with cultivating relationships that do celebrate you as the version you're growing into, that do celebrate your growth is equally important. That's literally the reason why the Powerhouse Women community exists to help you connect with and find other people who are on a growth journey with you. I love the, it's a similar question, but it's a different nuance to it. The question that Jess Jacobs submitted says, how do you navigate the feelings of rejection and feeling misunderstood? When you can sense that certain people are distancing themselves from you during the gap. And I think feeling misunderstood or feeling rejected can come in a lot of different forms. She's speaking specifically to noticing other people kind of distancing themselves from you. But I think two things come to mind here on top of what we already shared with the last question is, number one, if it's a feeling of kind of like rejection or judgment, I noticed for myself 
I want to kind of like give some context that is a broad enough perspective that everyone can see themselves in it. I was having a really difficult relationship with feeling rejected by a certain person in this season. And ironically, and a lot of my work in this season, we'll talk about this in other episodes, has been going back to earlier times in my life where I remember feeling that same sense of rejection. So I'm just like all in my middle school fields right now. I'm like all in, especially when it comes to like feeling chosen or feeling wanted. A lot of it ties back to like earlier memories of when I was just like super awkward and not the cool girl, not the one any of the boys in my class wanted. I mean, it goes deep. I can provide receipts of just like how awkward I really was at this age. And I just like remember this feeling of not being chosen specifically for, you know, the way I looked. And it was like, you know, just so innocent childhood stuff of, you know, when boys and girls like first start to take an interest in each other. And I was like, not ever the one that, you know, the boys had their eye on. And I was going back in a meditation to this exact memory. And for the first time, it was like, again, I was able to replay it in a way, and this is going to tie into the question, that I was like, wait a minute, this whole time I've had this, carried this feeling of rejection that felt so real. It feels like it's still affecting me today. It's so silly. I was probably like 10 years old. And going back to that memory and remembering that I went to a super small school. So we're talking, there were literally five boys in my class, five, that's it. And in this memory where they were kind of like, you know, prioritizing that they liked the other girls more than me. I had a memory that like, wait a minute, I actually didn't even like any of these boys. Like they weren't, they weren't cute. They weren't, I mean, sorry if I don't think any of them are listening, but I didn't actually want to be chosen by them. So I'm sharing this to say, I like to challenge my feelings of rejection because sometimes again, it's just, it's triggering a deeper wound we have about not being chosen, about being rejected, about feeling passed over for something. And if we actually go back to where the wound centers from, number one, ask yourself, do you actually care about this person's opinion in the current season or maybe in the the deeper memory that this rejection wound is tied to? And when I was able to ground myself into that reality that, you know, in sometimes when I experience rejection, yeah, I do think I wanted that thing. I did think I wanted that person's validation. Other times it's more, I just don't want to be rejected. But when I think about the situation where I perceive that I am being rejected, if I were the one choosing, I actually wouldn't choose the other, you know, friendship or partnership or whatever that is. And that kind of helps me, you know, really ground into is, is this rejection coming from someone who either you want the results that they have. So if there's someone judging you or kind of imposing their opinion on you or what you should be doing, do they have the results that you want to emulate? I think it's so important in this season to be discerning with whose feedback you allow in and whose feedback you take seriously. And there are certain people in my life where I do take their feedback really seriously And it's a pretty small number of people. So understanding that we're always just viewing other people's lives through our own lens, our own wounds, our own perception. But number one, if I'm kind of bumping up against this like feeling of rejection, I will first check in. Do I actually care about this person's opinion? Should I really care about this person's opinion? The other thing, and this is kind of like the deeper pattern to take a look at, is noticing that when it's a feeling of rejection or if I'm caring too much that someone else misunderstands me, it's a sign to me, again, everything is like a mirror pointing back to something that there is for me to look at so I can grow. It's probably the reason I'm in the gap season to begin with is that there's something deeper for me to really look at and work on. And for me, especially in this season, it's looking at where I'm outsourcing my validation. So if being misunderstood by someone And that person doesn't, it's like they don't pass the vibe check that this is someone I care about their opinion. It's looking at the deeper feelings of, wow, I'm really placing my sense of self-worth. I'm looking for validation from that person when it should come from within. It should come from within me. That's actually where my power lies. So yes, 
it can be confusing. It can feel really messy. It can feel really isolating if people are starting to distance themselves or if they just don't seem to get it and they're misunderstanding you. It's especially hurtful. It triggers me a lot when someone misunderstands my intentions or my character. But to remember that I can either spend a lot of time and energy trying to explain myself to someone who's committed to misunderstanding me, or I can use that time and energy to pour into myself, to pour into my growth, to pour into serving the people who do understand me. And when I think about it in that sense of the time and energy that I would normally, I just want, I want everyone to be on board. So I want to spend a lot of time trying to convince this person that it's, not a great use of my time or energy. That's not a good investment. And remembering that it does hurt and it still, it still hurts. I think it'll always hurt because I, I do genuinely really care. So I'm susceptible to having my heart broken if someone doesn't notice how much I care and appreciate that. But I'm not going to change myself. I'm going to keep my heart open because that's a big part of who I am. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be hurt or allow myself to feel the emotions, the feelings of being misunderstood or feeling rejected. And then I'll work it through the other prompts that I gave. Do I actually care about what this person thinks? Yes or no. Still hurts. Don't get me wrong. And then where am I outsourcing validation where, what would it look like for me to find it within myself? And really being on this journey of looking at all the places where I put my value and my worth in what someone else thinks of me and how much power that gives away. It's been such a beautiful process of learning to call that power back to myself because that's actually where like your true magnetism, your true abundance, your success, your next level of impact lies. The more that we can ground into that self-worth that isn't based in anyone else's opinion. It's a journey, easier said than done. This isn't like a quick fix. But I think when I notice I'm feeling rejected, it's usually an invitation to look at where I'm outsourcing my validation somewhere else outside of myself. The last question is one, I wanna talk a little bit of like the tactical. So Megan Henderson asked this great question. She said, how do you navigate out of transactional relationships without just doing it cold turkey. She said she recently cold turkeyed a transactional business and personal relationship because she was exhausted by it. I think we can all understand and feel that. And she felt like she could never be her most authentic self and be loved for who she was. And it's tough because she's saying she feels like she could have given the other person more closure, but for herself, she just kind of needed to end things. And this can be really tricky, I think, especially as someone who very much identifies as having deep rooted people pleasing tendencies that have just taken a long time to find my authenticity, be able to ground myself in not needing to have so much invested in not hurting other people or not. It's like everything was revolved around avoiding the possibility of disappointing someone else to the point where I just completely abandoned myself. So I can hear a lot of myself in this question. And the truth is I've had plenty of, you know, relationship breakups, friendship, otherwise, where it didn't necessarily end super pretty because I didn't have the tools. It was so triggering to me to even take the step of having a tough conversation or, you know, breaking away from a relationship that I knew I needed to. And so I think it's two things. I think it's having grace for yourself that if you're reprogramming very deep rooted patterns, and especially if there's not a lot of understanding between you and the other person, number one, you could have the most perfect conversation from this very high, I'm thinking like, um, just like this very elevated place, you know, where you're, you're just like a monk who has like the perfect response and, you know, you're coming from a place of enlightenment. That's the word I'm looking for. And the other person still might be pissed. The other person still might have their, their feelings hurt. So I always kind of go back to, okay, I'm doing the best that I can with the tools that I have right now. And even just recently, I had to have a really, really hard conversation and I wasn't super happy with how it went and how it ended. And when I went back and I thought about it, I was doing the absolute best that I could. 
in that conversation, in how much it broke my heart to have to deliver a really hard communication. And I think that I learned from it, but I learned from it in hindsight from doing it messy. So remember that I think there's certain levels of relationship where more closure is maybe warranted. So what I would encourage you to do if you're someone like Megan, who's, you know, kind of in this place where you're like, gosh, I just feel like I kind of need to cut it and walk away. Here's what I would have you ask yourself. I want you to connect in with your integrity. So how you view yourself. If you were to go cold turkey and just kind of ghost this person, stop responding to them, send them a text message when really you felt like they probably would have appreciated a conversation. I try to check in with, am I defaulting to this because of fear? Because I'm afraid to directly confront the possible disappointment, the possible anger, frustration, whatever it is. And does it leave it resolved for me or does it leave like an open loop? Because energetically, if you are, if you know you kind of need a break from someone's energy, you know you need to cut off a connection. If you do it in a way that because you're still thinking about the way you broke off the connection, it still like has energetic residue. It's like an open loop. It's not act. there's no closure. Then whether you already had the messy conversation and you want to go back and say, hey, could I didn't love the way we ended it. Could we have, you know, could we have another conversation? I'd love to, to bring some closure to it. Think about it through the lens of yourself. Don't go back for more closure just because you feel like the other person wants it. Does it feel incomplete for you? And realizing that if it does, if you left it in a way that feels incomplete for yourself, you're still leaking energy. You're still actually giving that person energy that you could call back to yourself for healing, for developing new relationships, et cetera. And it actually would be in your best interest to close the loop, meaning whatever that's gonna require have a direct conversation. Maybe you feel like being in communication wouldn't be the best. So maybe you write your thoughts in an email. I always recommend, this is what I do myself too. I write the email, I save it. I don't send it right away. I'll go back and read it the next day and still see if I feel the same way. And if the things I wanted to express, I still feel the same way. And then maybe you send it in writing. There's so many different ways we can create closure for ourselves. But I think the real question is, yeah, sometimes cutting cold turkey might be the only way you can get yourself to make that decision and take that action that you know you need to take. But realize you can always come back around and revisit after some time and space, or you can share any closing thoughts that, you know, maybe you feel like it's going to give you closure to express in another way, like a written form. If it just feels like I, I'm kind of tapping into my own energy, sometimes because I'm still really working on building this, just kind of like this home and being grounded in what's true for me, not being influenced by what's true for the other person, not you know really dipping into those people-pleasing tendencies or needing to fix and change the situation so someone else is comfortable. Sometimes it's actually not responsible for me to try and over-explain myself. So, I would answer this question for yourself through the lens of, did it leave a loop open or do you actually have closure? And cold turkey for you meant you have closure. It's actually not on you to give another person closure. They have the ability to come back and ask for clarity, ask for you know questions, ask for another conversation if they need and want it. But look at the same scenario through the lens of, does it feel complete for you? And did you leave it in a way that's consistent with what's in integrity for you? So for me, that is, did I leave it in a way that's loving and as positive as I possibly can be, even knowing that maybe the other person doesn't see it the same way? If I'm in integrity with myself and I communicated with love to the best of my ability and I expressed myself honestly and directly, usually any part of me that wants to go back and re-engage is actually coming from old patterns of people pleasing, wanting to try and avoid disappointing someone else, et cetera. And that's actually the patterns I'm moving out of, not the ones I'm moving into. So it's gonna be really individual depending on where you're at, depending on what level of people pleasing you're currently <laughs> engaged in. And for me, it's really, really been a process. You know, it's not easy. I think ending relationships, outgrowing relationships is the hardest part of a gap season. And 
because our relationships play such a big role in our life, I think most of my lessons in life have come through relationships. I'm triggered in relationships that points me back to where I need to grow. I realize most of my fears come out when it comes to developing relationships. And, and what it shows me, I think it shows me my strength. My strength actually is connecting with people and building relationships, but it also makes that kind of like my Achilles heel where most of my lessons are. So just know that I, I don't think it gets easier but I think you do develop new skills. You develop more of a sense of yourself where you're not so susceptible to other people's opinions, other people's disappointment really affecting you. And to realize that we really are all playing an important role in each other's lives. And that role doesn't always get to be playing the hero. As long as I'm not directly attempting to be someone's villain, like that's not my goal, I'm not trying to hurt anyone, and I'm being true to myself, I do trust that if I'm honoring myself and I'm coming from the lens of, okay, this is gonna be the highest and best for everyone because I can't move forward in the way that we were, it gives me peace knowing that whether or not someone sees it in the moment, that by me making the brave decision to create distance or maybe you know, completely cut off a certain connection, it's actually gonna be the highest and best for everyone involved, even though I may not get to choose what role I play in their lesson. Sometimes you gotta be the villain, even if that's not what you would choose. So just know that this is, this is something that's probably gonna show up as you, if you are a human being on a growth journey, you will continue to have evolution in your relationship life. It's just the price of it. And if you think about it, if you were to have kept every single like best friend, every single person who was close to you from childhood on, you wouldn't actually have the time, the space, the energetic bandwidth to pour into those connections anyway. So I found that like as I grow, it actually deepens the connections that I want to go deeper with. And it's, it makes it more okay that other connections are just playing a different role. And not everyone has to be like in the front row of my life, really getting that up close access. And for me, this is still the most uncomfortable part of the gap. It's the most uncomfortable part of this current gap season. And I'm also really proud of myself for the growth that I've had here. So it gets better, I promise.